Oh, we're back again and ready to go because the stretch run is underway in college football. And Wolf Wolf, the dogs are still a barking on Three Dog Thursday. Thank you for finding us, however you've done so, through the Winning Cures Everything platforms with the video show and Winning Cures Everything's YouTube page or in podcast form for Three Dog Thursday. I am the somewhat capable host, TJ Reeves. He is a special guest here as part of Three Dog Thursday. I love going west. I love going to Vegas and getting the insight of my initials brother from another mother. Hello, T.C. Martin, ready to talk some college football underdogs with me for this upcoming Saturday uh, as the stretch run's about to get underway. How are we feeling? We ready to go with some more college football. Ready to go, T.J. Reeves. Thanks uh, for letting me join this soiree. Uh, always <laughs> fun with you. And uh, we have been uh, red hot with some football here in Vegas, you, and we're ready to go, baby. You have, because TC does the best bets on his five-day-a-week show in Las Vegas, the TC Martin Show. Galactically famous, as I like to say, the TC Martin Show. TCMartinShow.com, five days a week in Vegas. They do the best bets, but those can be faves, those can be totals and underdogs, and it can be NFL. Here we hone you in, brother, that it's only underdogs, and it is college football only. They don't have to win. But they just have to cover the number. And by the way, last week, we now have a standard to live up to. After a struggle two weeks ago, four and two total on the show. Kevin Rogers of Vegas Insider uh, and scoresandodds.com was right here on the program. He came up with two correct with Army and Arkansas. I had two correct with Oklahoma State and NC State. So we were four and two last week. So we got a standard to live up to here for this week in college football. You are my guest on Three Dog Thursday. So the floor is yours. Give me an underdog that you like and why to begin things here in college football. All right, TJ. Well, I'm going to go with a pair of rivalry games here, and it's a little bit early for rivalry time, but uh, the way college football is right now, you never know when the true rivalry weekend is anymore, right? But I'm going to go kind of down in your neck of the woods, my friend. That's right. We're going to hone into FLA, where we've got the battle between the Canes and the Seminoles. And there is a line here that may seem a little out of whack to uh, to some handicappers as Florida State is a 14-point favorite over Miami. I understand that in theory because Florida State has been rock solid all year. They've been getting fantastic you know, quarterback play uh, from Jordan Travis. We get that. But this is a rivalry game, and I like the Miami Hurricanes in the spot getting 14. Now, I can make the excuse that the Canes' record should be a little bit better than it is. Because they've had a couple of tough games where they're on the wrong side of things, but that was like, because like the Georgia could... Tech game where all you got to do is kneel on the ball, for example, Doctor. Well, exactly. That's just amazing it, that they exactly, blew that one still. exactly, yeah. exactly. But as you say, you are a somewhat capable host, which you are. I still believe believe that Van Dyke is a somewhat capable quarterback. <laughs> Very nice, even though Very he's nice. had the turnover bug, especially against North Carolina. But uh, I think it's a big number. Uh, the Canes have been talking all week uh, how they're going to settle down. They're going to take take care of the, the football in this one. And it is a, a rivalry for them. They can stay within two touchdowns. I know Florida State beat them down last year, but this is a huge game for Miami for a de- going to a decent bowl game. Give me the Canes plus two touchdowns. When was the last time that we could say Miami plus 14 against anybody, let alone one of their own contemporaries in Florida State? And again, the Knolls are uh, six and three. They were losing in the first half of the game to Pitt, struggled to put it away. Uh, they finally got the the twenty four seven win, but did not cover last week. I was on the opposite side again. I had NC State over Miami uh, a week ago uh, in Wolfpack Land in Raleigh. It is a rivalry game. It is in Tallahassee. Again, the doctor will go at three thirty Eastern time, twelve thirty Vegas time, Pacific time in the afternoon. Uh, with the Miami Hurricanes. I'm going to back up earlier than that. Uh, And the first underdog I'm going with is right out of the shoot. The big noon Saturday game on Fox nationally, noon Eastern time. They will be there with their pregame coverage as well is Penn State and Michigan. Now, Dr. Full disclosure to the audience on Three Dog Thursday, you and I have already gone round and round. We went 15 rounds like Ali Frazier on this whole thing with Jim Harbaugh and what they're going to do or not do to him. Full disclosure... We are recording this late on Wednesday. At the moment, the Big Ten has not done anything yet. T.C. Martin and I don't know if they are going to do something to him. That could be a variable. But for right now, I like Penn State in this spot anyway, with all the controversy going around with Michigan. Huge game, both teams. Penn State at home. I got the home dog here. I'm getting some points 
at home. And I like Penn State outright in this game to catch Michigan, hand a distracted Michigan team their first loss. I'm getting five here. Any thought on the spot? Early start, 100,000 plus in Happy Valley. Any thought here, doctor, on Penn State, Michigan? Yeah, here's the thing. So my compadre, who uh, is my bookend guy on Monday and Friday, professional handicapper Marco D'Angelo, will actually be at this game. Uh, He made the trip uh, back to Happy Valley for this game. And, um, you know, here's the thing, TJ. He was disappointed, and so was I. The number one, this game is at 12 noon Eastern, and it's not a whiteout game for Penn State. Is that going to have any effect? I don't know, but doesn't this game really reek like prime time ESPN or ABC, you know, 730 Eastern, 430 Pacific? You would think so, right? Here's where it scares me a little bit. You know, Michigan has been solid on both sides of the ball, but you're right. They've got things going on in their camp right now and you know they're watching sports center they're reading all the clippings they're online they they get it they understand their head coach could be fired and they could be on the cusp of not playing in the postseason that is is a factor that would bode well in favor of penn state but i have hesitation with penn state just because i go back to that ohio state game and i was on penn state against ohio mm. state and they were just downright awful if you remember they were 0 for 15 on their first third down attempts 0 for 15 1 for 16 in the game as they converted one on the the drive that meant nothing but the problem in state is the quarterback play i just can't get behind drew uh, drew aller now granted they are at home Maybe that they are going to play better. They can't play any worse than they did against Ohio State. You you hope for a low scoring slug out affair. Home doggy makes a lot of sense. I can see why you're going with it. I would have joined you, but I just can't get behind what I saw Penn State do against the best opponent they faced all year in Ohio State. Yeah, I don't disagree that that was uh, no other way to describe it. it was a turd. It was a turd performance from them. Yeah. It was a low scoring game, and Ohio State uh, beat them. But this is back at home. Penn State seven and two against the number. Uh, they covered the number last week with Maryland laying seven and a half. Michigan only four four and one against the number. Uh, they did uh, route uh, last week Purdue, but they didn't cover the thirty one point number. Again, the quarterback battle: Aller versus JJ McCarthy. Penn State has not won a lot of these games for James Franklin in the big spots against Ohio State and Michigan. It has eluded them. I think, though, this week it will be different. Again, it is an early start. Give me the Nittanys. I was there for their opening game win for Compass Media's national radio coverage uh, for their win over West Virginia. LeVar Arrington and I called the game. By the way, on Compass Media, Greg Daniels and LeVar Arrington will call this game. Uh, but we'll Penn see. State legend LeVar Arrington. Yes, uh, that. Stick City, as he likes to say, <laughs> number 11. And Abdul Carter is the linebacker now wearing number 11. Right. LeVar right. started the whole Stick City thing. They've had three or four linebackers uh, following the tradition. Let's see if it's a big day for them. I'm not so sure. And again, one more time on the disclaimer. You may know if they've done something to Jim Harbaugh. TC and I don't know that on Wednesday night as we're recording the video show here and the Three Dog Thursday podcast. If something gets done, Dr. Thursday, Thursday afternoon, and the courts get involved and the lawyers get involved, the late Johnny Cochran might get involved in absentia. I don't know who might get involved uh, to help Harbaugh out. We shall see if it comes to it. All right, let's move on. Another underdog from you, please. What do you like for doggy number two for Three Dog Thursday and why? I don't know what it is, TJ, but I'm hanging in your neck of the woods down there in Florida, and this time I'm going with those Golden Knights. No, not the Ooh. Vegas Golden Knights, Ooh. but the UCF Golden Knights, Central Florida in this spot at home against Oklahoma State. I think this is a great spot for UCF for a couple reasons, and a go-against spot against Oklahoma State. Obviously, Bedlam last week, Oak State got the victory over Oklahoma. Uh, they're living high on that. Uh, Mike Gundy and company, as you can see, I don't, I don't know if they still have come down from that victory. So now they go on the against a very good UCF team. A lot of people will look at UCF's record and say, hmm, are they really that good? Well, I can tell you, again, they gave away games from the turnover aspect. And again, I'm asking them to take care of the ball. And Tommy Reese Plumley, pretty good quarterback. And I really believe that he'll be able to move the ball the Knights are going to be ready to play. It's a must-win game for him when for, for them when you're looking about conference uh, situations, conference championships, and again, a, a primary bowl game, which uh, UCF uh, is more than capable of. They are ninth in the country in total yards. 
Oklahoma State, not great on the defensive side of the ball. Remember, they gave up 492 yards to Oklahoma last week. Again, I expect a little bit of emotional letdown. I'd like to be getting a few more points, but we're getting three. I think UCF can win this game and probably should win this game outright. So I'm going to take the Golden Knights. And guess what? You don't need this, but I'm just joining in with you. I like UCF here, too, for a lot of the reasons you just said. The letdown for Oklahoma State. UCF found something last week in the narrow win over Cincinnati. They're only 3-6 and against the number. That concerns me a little bit here. But they had an opportunity uh, late in the Oklahoma game on the road a couple of weeks ago. Scored a touchdown, needed a two-point play, ran a ridiculous T.C. Martin, a ridiculous two-point conversion trick play, double reverse thing. Botched it, didn't get into overtime. Gus Malzahn getting too uh, tricky. I think at the place that they call the bounce house, uh, UCF's on-campus stadium. I think the bounce house will be bouncing in Orlando. I'm with you. I will take the three points here. This one at 3.30 afternoon on Saturday. UCF Knights in the Big 12 now. A game with Oak State. Let's see if they can get it. You and I are both hoping that they can. TC, stand by. One more underdog from each of us is upcoming. Let me remind the audience that one of our sponsors is Ticket Smarter and the Ticket Smarter mobile app. If you're looking to go to that game uh, between Penn State and Michigan, if you're hearing us and you're maybe going to a couple of the other bigger matchups, we're going to talk about Tennessee and Missouri in a little bit in Columbia, which should be quite an atmosphere in Columbia, Missouri. If you're looking to go, for example, in Seattle to Washington and Utah, Oklahoma plays West Virginia in Norman. Any of these biggest games, use our friends at Ticket Smarter and the Ticket Smarter mobile app. Why? They've got the most competitive prices on the secondary market. Your purchase is guaranteed and secure. And we've got a promo code twofold. Listen up. You can get in with the promo code WCE10. Take $10 off a $100 or less order. Take $10 off if you're trying to get in for $100 or less on a ticket or even a pair of tickets. But if the tickets are more expensive, like they're going to be for Alabama and Kentucky and Lexington early Saturday, you're going to probably pay $300, $400 for the best seat. Take $20 off with the promo code WCE20. So again, two promo codes. WCE10 gets you $10 off an order of $100 or less. WCE20 gets you 20 bucks off an order of $300 or more. It's Ticket Smarter, the Ticket Smarter mobile app. It won't take you three minutes to sign up, browse the selection of all these college football games. It's still good for the NFL. The NBA has started. College basketball has started. Concerts, whatever. Use these promo codes. They're good, but why not use them for college football? It's Ticket Smarter, the Ticket Smarter mobile app. Promo codes WCE10 or WCE20 to get in the game with Ticket Smarter. Think smarter, Ticket Smarter. All right, let's rock on. One more underdog for each of us, Doctor. You have already gone two games in the state of Florida. I'm looking down my sheet in my notes. I don't think there's a third underdog in the Sunshine State for you. You got to go somewhere else. Where else are you going in college football for an underdog on Saturday? How come? How about we go a little closer to me out here? Uh, but we'll go West Coast in the Pacific time zone. And I'm going with the Pac-12 matchup with USC and Oregon. Mm. Now, a lot of people are, are high on the Oregon uh, squad right now, understandably so. Best team in the Pac-12. However, uh, USC is getting fifth. I'm looking at a lot of value here. Now, I know people will say, well, USC's got to be down a little bit. They gave everything they had against Washington last week. They came up short 52 to 42. They still put up 515 yards, uh, you know, against uh, against Washington, uh, the team that's undefeated 9-0 right now, and Oregon right now still looking up at Washington. But I really believe that USC has some heart and they have some character. And one thing that we know about USC is they definitely have talent. So for a lot of people thinking that USC is done, they're still seven and three. They have an opportunity to still make a little bit of noise here in the Pac-12 and cause a little, you know, uh, congestion, so to speak, by knocking off Oregon here and maybe even helping out Washington a couple of other teams because – you know, there's still a long way to go here. And you've got other teams that are playing spoiler as well in Oregon State and Washington State and SC. And when you line it all up, you still have Caleb Williams. They have the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, still, in my opinion, the best quarterback in college football. And it's really not even close. USC made a coaching change this past week where they they fired their defensive coordinator. I understand things are probably going to stay the same schematically wise, but 
when this traditionally happens, you see a better performance. I think too many points here. I think Oregon is full of themselves a little bit, and I think they can be had on the defensive side of the ball, especially against a sharp marksman like Caleb Williams. Too many points. When have we ever heard of USC getting more than a touchdown, let alone double digits, let alone more than two touchdowns, TJ Reese? 15, this game will be close. Trojans will keep it close against the Ducks. And again, Caleb Williams was spectacular for a lot of that Washington game. They just couldn't stop him. So now they've sacrificed Alex Grinch. Uh, the Grinch, even before Christmas, is gone. Sean yeah. Nua and Brian Odom are the co-defensive coordinators now. It's not clear on who's calling the defense. They may alternate and on different series uh, who calls the defense. We'll see if it's any better for USC. Bo Nix. Again, has a Heisman outside shot. Both of these teams lost narrowly to Washington. They have that in common. Let's see what happens on Saturday after uh, noon, or actually Saturday evening uh, for this one, Pacific time, uh, 7.30 Pacific time, 10.30 late night uh, in the East. Oregon, again, favored by 15, 15 for the doctor for Southern Cal in this matchup. Uh, I've got one more underdog, and I am going to go look the SEC way for the Mizzou Tigers at home with Tennessee. This is more of an anti-play TC against the Tennessee Volunteers. I went against them when they played Florida in September. I love the Gators in that spot to win outright. Again, this is a short I, – I, I really would have thought that Missouri would probably be a three-point favorite. They hung in there with Georgia last week. Eli Drinkwitz's team uh, is good on both sides of the ball. I'm not a big believer in Joe Milton and uh, and the Tennessee weapons. Their offense has struggled at times. They played some uh, suspect games. Uh, they got wiped out by Alabama in the second half a couple of weeks ago. Um, all right, so I, I like Missouri to win this game outright. You're giving me a point. It's an easy one. It's like the doctor from four feet on the green. It's it's a it's a money pot, a par putt here. Give me Mizzou plus the one for three dog Thursday here just to win the game outright and cover a third underdog uh, for me. So I will take that SEC underdog here and grab it. And it is it is interesting as everybody jockeys for position here in the East uh, going up against Georgia. Georgia's basically all but locked it up. They've got the game with Ole Miss on Saturday. So the question becomes, is it going to be Alabama or is Alabama going to trip up? Is it going to be Georgia and Alabama in the SEC title game? Uh, Doctor, do you have any quick thought on the SEC as it shapes up here late in the year with three weeks left? Well, first of all, I'll say that I agree with the Missouri pick. Uh, again, I laid away from that uh, because, I, you know, it basically it's a pick em game. You're only getting one point. Is it really an underdog? Missouri's at home. But I think that they win the game outright. So then that just backs up, uh, you know, what we're thinking here as the same. And I like Brady Cook as a quarterback. You're right. He had a pretty good showing against Georgia. Uh, Missouri can move the ball. We get that. And uh, I think it's a good spot. I mean, Tennessee on the road. Again, I'm not a big Milton fan, and especially defensively. So I think that you're onto something. You got the right side there, all about the black and gold. Go Tigers uh, in that game. And again, let's don't count out the Alabama Crimson Tide here. I know they're starting to get a little bit of love. A few weeks ago, people just wanted to dismiss them, but you, you could still have that log jam up there. And then Georgia's got a pretty tough game this week as well, too. I thought about maybe going with Ole Miss. Uh, but Bowers coming back for Georgia, that's big. We'll see if Lane Kiffin can win a big road game. We know that they can score. So uh, still, I, I still think there are some possibilities where it, it uh, you know, Alabama could be in the thick of things here and uh, some other teams could play spoiler alert here in the SEC as well. And Ole Miss obviously has the head-to-head -head loss to Alabama, so they need Alabama to lose again uh, in SEC play or create some kind of three-way tie if they are able – uh, again, Ole Miss, what did, what did we see for the line in that game? I think they're getting at least 10, 10 right, yes. in the game. Yeah. With uh, actually Georgia. 11 now. Yeah. 11 yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. with Georgia in that matchup. That's a nighttime matchup, 7 Eastern time for that one. Again, Missouri-Tennessee earlier in the day at 3.30 Eastern time, which, by the way, is going to be one of the final games. They've only got like three games left on that Saturday 3.30 slot for CBS where it's been for more than a – uh, 20 years, close to 25 years they've been doing the SEC games, but ESPN and ABC take it over after this year. Let's see what happens uh, in that one. One other game on the honorable mention. We just touched on Georgia Ole Miss. Also out West, does Washington have a little letdown with Utah? Uh, the Utes have had a couple of huge wins. This is on the road at Seattle. I stayed clear of this uh, here, but I, I just I want the doctor's thought one more time out West. Uh, how good is Washington? Penix as a Heisman candidate. Thought on that real quick. Not that you have to pick it, but a thought on yeah. Washington and Utah. 
Uh, I would be all over Utah if it wasn't for the third string quarterback again. Now he showed up last week and, you know, coming off the loss uh, they had the week before was brutal against Oregon where they got just boat raced on, on their home field, but they spanked Arizona state 55 to three last week. Uh, this is a spot where you're getting basically double digits against a Washington team that is susceptible on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Utah is going to run the ball. They're going to be physical. Uh, they are the better defensive team. So yeah, no problem using Utah in this situation. But the only reason I didn't was because again, when you're void at quarterback of, of, you know, not having the ability to get big plays, that's what scares me in this game. But the number is rather large. Uh, Washington four four and one against the number, Utah five three and one. So nothing spectacular there. This is on the road at Husky Stadium, loud environment. Washington can see the college football playoff. They can't taste it yet, but they can see it in the distance. Can perhaps get there. Uh, let's see if they can get that win. Uh, doctor, a tremendous job here as we've given them some underdogs on Three Dog Thursday. Let's plug away again because you do this five days a week. TC Martin Show, tcmartinshow.com in Las Vegas. And Friday, your best bets. You've been rolling in your best bets. Plug away because you pick everything besides underdogs on that show, on your show on Fridays. Go. Yeah, Fridays are three best college games, three best NFL games, and myself and our crew, uh, including uh, former quarterback uh, Jay Schrader, former uh, Minnesota Vikings head coach Mike Tice, uh, and, and other celebrities, uh, you know, guys that uh, come on the show on Friday at the Westgate of Las Vegas, 2 to 4 p.m. Pacific time, Monday through Friday, like TJ said, and then Friday, our best bets. And you can go get everything up on the website there at tcmartinshow.com. You can listen live, you can listen to the current uh, interviews, past interviews, the classic interviews, and I guess uh, the interviews, the blogs, the articles, and the best bets all there at tcmartinshow.com. Great stuff there. And again, uh, you can find the show online, tcmartinshow.com. And I was out there with you in the summer at the Westgate. They got a couple of TVs. They got a couple of, they got 57 <laughs> the 4K large video wall, brother. They have That's 309 it. huge TVs at the Westgate to go watch all the games. And, and I games. love it when you come out there, TJ, because not only are we watching the games, but we're eating some great food. Oh, brother. yeah. We always have to, we always have to do that. All right. Uh, here we go. By means of recap, TC on the Miami Hurricanes with the rivalry game with Florida State. This is not Warren Sapp and Derek Brooks and Warwick Dunn and uh, Gino Toretta and Lamar Thomas and all those guys in the 80s, Charlie ward in the 90s uh etc this uh, michael irvin this is the uh 2020s version of miami florida state the doctor says give me miami we agree he and i on ucf in the game with oklahoma state the doctor also likes the southern cow trojans and caleb williams to at least keep it close in the game with oregon i'll go penn state in the game with michigan and i give me missouri as an outright winner against tennessee doctor always a pleasure to have you thank you for hanging here uh, continued success with the T.C. Martin Show. By the way, the voice of the Las Vegas Aces on radio. Two rings, not just one WNBA title ring, two rings for the doctor now. Kudos to you. Thank you for hanging with me on Three Dog Thursday once again. Appreciate you, brother. There is T.C. Martin. Follow him at T.C. Martin 21. I'm merely T.J. Reeves. As we come your way on Winning Cures Everything and the Winning Cures platforms and on podcast form. For now, we're good for Three Dog Thursday. Bye.